Hey guys, welcome to Sequential Consequence. My name is Nelson and I'm here today with another rambling discussion, review, whatever you want to call it. This time we're going to take a look at Go Go Monster by Taiyo Matsumoto. And uh, first of all, we're just going to take a look at the book itself because this, this book is beautiful. It's a Visig, so it is six sides, but it's also a hardcover. And not only that, but it has colored page edges and uh, also has a nice little design right there, which uh, I don't really understand what it was. But after after you read the story, you will understand what these uh, what that means. Now, this cover is actually kind of a wrap around, and the series is something uh, pretty interesting in that it puts it kind of has pay, it has negative pages, so it starts with negative eight right on the cover. And and then as soon as you open it, there's a page like right on right on the cover, and uh, there are negative pages right here that are a little bit more gray than usual. And then from here we go into the positive numbers, of course. But before we discuss that, this actually comes with a slipcase dust jacket kind of thing, which is this uh, very low quality uh, cardboard. Um, that just does not look very good. It's just, it's uh, actually like mine's kind of coming apart right here. Um, and it makes like that sticky noise. Um, but it is kind of an alternate cover and you can just uh, put it in on your shelf like this if you want. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of leave it like this because I don't really want to throw it out. Um, but I don't really like how it looks at all really. I, I just don't really see the point of, of this at all. Um, but I don't want to throw it out, so we're keeping it. But, but yeah, the book itself looks awesome. It's really, really freaking well built. The binding is good. Um, uh, sometimes the pages will kind of stick together in a weird way. Not stick together, but, you know, sometimes when you move a page, like, uh, you will move the connected page as well. Um, you know, mo mostly in most bindings, you don't really run into that issue. Here you run into it a little bit, but it's really not a big deal. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to illustrate it, but it's not, it's really not a big deal. Um, but because the build of the book is really nice and, uh, and not, not just that, but the pages are also pretty thick, which you kind of need because Matsumoto style is, uh, uh, very heavy on the inking. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's go on and move on to the story. Now, this book is, uh, a book about... It's a coming of age story, uh, but it is told in a very expressionistic style. Uh, this is the story about Yuki, a kid named Yuki, this kid right here. It even says his name right there. If it could focus, I don't think it will, but either way, that's Yuki. Uh, he's one of the few main characters in the story. He has He is supported by two other characters, one of which uh, one of whom is named Makoto, and uh, Makoto is just kind of a normal kid uh, who who takes a, uh, an interest in Yuki. Uh, then we've got IQ, a kid who wears a box on his head. <laughs> I'll explain later. And then we've got Gonzo, the caretaker of the school. Uh, Yuki himself is kind of a recluse. He's kind of a loner. He's uh, always kind of alone. And not just that, but he sees these monsters um, in the school and he sees them in water droplets, which is uh, actually the design right there. Basically, like, you know, when you're a kid and you see, you might look at water droplets, you might look at, uh, I don't know, leaves or really random things and you see faces in them. Yeah, basically, uh, Yuki uses that as kind of a defense mechanism. Uh by creating this whole world uh, of of the others, as he calls them, um, and he made he made up this whole thing in his mind of uh, of these factions of monsters, one that is the others, and one that is uh, his own faction, and he and he basically created all this uh, lore for the school, essentially. And, uh, which serves as kind of the lens through which he views the school. And I'm just gonna, like, leave this on the screen for a bit. 
and he basically uses these things as kind of a lens to uh, interpret his his uh, peers' actions, uh, the adults' actions, and the school as a whole. And um, and he keeps talking about things as if there's uh, some sort of danger. You know, he says that the others are coming uh, and uh, that he needs to do something about it. So in the beginning of the story, you don't really know if this is a supernatural story. Actually, even to, even at the end of the story, you could totally interpret this as a supernatural story or just a psychological uh, or, or just the way that the psychological uh, state of Yuki is portrayed in the story through the art. Uh, and I, personally, I, I think it was brilliantly done. I, I just think that the art style is perfectly married to the storytelling in this, in this manga. And uh, if you're not familiar with Taiyo Matsumoto, his art style is uh, very different from what you might be used to. It's a little cartoony, um, a little uh, messy, a little uh, impressionistic. And um, the thing is, it actually kind of changes a little bit too as it goes along the story. Because this story has only five chapters. The chapters are all different seasons. So we follow a whole year of uh, Yuki's life, event uh, essentially. And, um, and it goes through uh, different seasons. And uh, we, we don't only find... Uh, and we, uh, here is uh, uh, IQ, as he is known. And I really love this panel right here. Um, if you can't read it, it's basically his um, his teacher telling him that he cannot wear his box to the exams. And and he says, oh, then I won't apply. And then she said, and then he says, this is who I am, teacher. Asking me to take an exam without my box is like asking someone without a box to take an exam with one. And uh, this is just another kid just like Yuki who's kind of uh, dealing with the world is in his own way he he uses the box as, the, as a defense mechanism against the uh the, kind of like the the evil in other students and in the world um and basically has uh kids in in their school get more delinquent he actually ends up getting a bigger box to protect himself against uh, the delinquency or the the impurity uh, and essentially, Yuki does kind of a same, the same thing, except he does it with his uh, monsters, where he just kind of goes off on his own and just kind of uh, just spends a lot of time in his own head. And uh, let's see what else I need to touch on. Um, but yeah, in uh, in terms of, um, I, I would actually compare the the way that this story could be seen as uh, either supernatural or psychological. Uh, I would actually compare that to Inyo Asano's Nijigahara Holograph, uh, which I pulled out right here. Uh, this is kind of similar in some ways where you could see the story as like an actual supernatural occurrence, or you could see it uh, uh, via other methods. Um, but, but yeah, basically we follow an unreliable narrator in Yuki, and we experience the story as him. And the story itself is uh, kind of surreal. It's kind of very deliberately paced and deliberately confusing, um, but not in not in a way not in a way that you might think. It's not convoluted or or anything like that. It is just kind of portrayed in a very surreal way, and you have to kind of think outside the box when you're trying to interpret uh, what's going on. Uh, as you can see, yeah, yeah, our narrator here, our, our main protagonist, is not very reliable uh, in terms of what he can see. And uh, it's up to you to interpret what those things mean. Because you are reading this and you... I mean, when you're a kid, you don't really understand the world, right? Uh, at least you don't understand it the way that, that we as adults do. Um, but... And this book does an amazing job at putting you in the mental state of a kid that kind of lost confusion and just that like, just not really understanding how the world works really. And uh, this is a kid who's just very closed off. He's just very closed off from everybody else and uh, this is his coming of age story. 
this is basically him saying i need to leave this darkness behind and i'm not saying this is what happens but you know like this is a coming of age story um but yeah he needs to figure out how to get out of this sort of funk that he's in because he he gets made fun of a lot because he kind of openly talks about his uh delusions and he um and of course he makes make he gets made fun of a lot that's where uh that's where these supporting characters come in we've got makoto who's just kind of this normal kid who just kind of asks him like hey who's superstar and superstar is the name that he gives to the leader of the others the others uh capitalized others that he uh that he imagines exist and uh you know this kid makoto is the only one that really takes an interest he doesn't believe it but he's kind of humoring it and just kind of wants a friend and um and then we've got iq the guy with the box on his head i think i already explained more or less what his uh deal is and uh and then we got guns the caretaker and the caretaker here um see if i can find a nice picture of the caretaker Hmm. I can't find anything right now, but here, have some nice art. But yeah, the caretaker, he is basically the only adult that Yuki actually takes seriously. He, the caretaker, he basically spends most of his time just taking care of things around school, but he spends most of his time taking care of a flower garden in the school, and Yuki helps him out a lot with that. And, uh, Flowers are kind of a reoccurring motif throughout the story. They kind of for obvious reasons. I mean, this is a coming of age story. Um, but um, yeah, Yuki works on those and he kind of helps him out. And uh, this uh, and Gans kind of really functions as the anchor of this story as the only adult that we actually really see a dialogue from. Most of the other adults will be usually teachers, just like kind of like, I don't know, nagging or yelling at Yuki or other characters or just, you know, just doing their thing. But they're not too, the, but the, generally they kind of act as like adults as a child would see them. While Gans is someone who treats Yuki as an actual adult and lets him help him with his chores and whatnot. And as such, he, and because Gans has worked in school for a long time, so he has seen a lot of kids go through this kind of thing. And so he has a lot more uh, sympathy for uh, for what he's going through. But he even says on the beginning of the story, like, this is something that you're going to have to see through. This is something you're going to you're going to have to come out on the other side. And uh, he just kind of. And he also is the only person who really puts it l into literal terms what is uh, what Yuki is going through and he explains it to the other teachers as well and uh, so he kind of serves as an anchor for us to to interpret everything else through because we can't really we can't really trust our narrator our he's not our, our narrator but we can't really trust our uh, main character because he's seeing things that are not there or supposedly are not there and we can't trust IQ either, who's one of the other main characters, because he's probably even worse off than uh, than Makoto. And uh, not than not than Makoto, than Yuki, because Makoto is pretty much normal. And uh, but yeah, let me see what else I need to uh, I need to touch on. Um, yeah, honestly, that I think I've said pretty much as much as I need to say. Um, if this, if you really, if you like coming of age stories, if you like reading about childhood psychology, uh, as I do, because uh, I mean, now in case you haven't noticed, I like Asano a whole lot, and most of his stories deal with uh, just kind of your growth over the years, so whether that's as a child or even as an adult, he touches on pretty much all of them. But what really appealed to me to appealed me to him at first was how he handles uh how a child would think like in something like pun pun uh so this this really this is right up my alley this really appeals to me and uh i definitely would rate it very highly uh i would definitely say a nine or a ten uh i would have to i kind of have to think about it a little bit more but definitely up there this is uh this is a really good book it's not for everybody that's for sure if you don't like lack of clarity you might not like it as much um, but I will say the ending is not like mind fucky or anything like that. 
like the the whole story is kind of vague. Uh, uh, I mean, that, the whole story itself is not vague, but it's told a little bit vaguely. And then you just kind of put it together at the end, like almost like a kid who grew up and then has the hindsight to see his life behind him and see like uh, kind of what's uh, what's going on. So yeah, it's a really good book. Um, I'm gonna actually uh, recommend some other stuff. Uh, I want to, I kind of want to make this another part of my uh, of these types of videos where I kind of recommend things that are uh, similar, and I basically, and basically to give you an idea, like of uh, you know, if you've read this, where do you go from here? Or if you read the other things that I mentioned, this would be a good, uh, a good pick for you. And I already mentioned Nijigar Holograph. Like th these books are actually not similar at all. Uh, but they do have that similarity in when, when, where they have, uh, where they could be interpreted as supernatural or psychological or however you really want to see it. But first of all, I want to touch on some other uh, works by Matsumoto because I have most of them. Uh, I don't have Sunny. That's the one that I'm uh, going to be getting uh, next. But those books are expensive. Those are like single volumes. I mean, they're hardcovers and they're a good size, but they're but they're just like single volumes that are, I think, like $16, $17 each, and there's six of them. So that's a lot of money for a six-volume uh, series. That said, I like Matsumoto a lot so far, um, and I'm going to continue uh, reading his work. Um, so yeah, this is another book uh, of his, uh, Blue Spring. Uh, this is actually, I'm pretty sure this is out of print. Uh, I don't really know. This was not too great. Uh, it was, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, it was still really good. But I would give it like a seven instead of you know the, the high standard that I would put uh, Go Go Monster under. But it kind of has that same similar art style. But here it's a little bit more gritty. This is about it's still about it, this is about high schoolers instead of middle schoolers. But this and this is about more like delinquency in those grades. And then we have the recently released uh, Cats at the Louvre, which is honestly one of my favorite books in my collection. It just feels great. And uh, I'll show you some art from here as well. Uh, because I think this is a much newer work, so his art is probably a lot better, I would kind of assume. But, but yeah. And then we've got his, um, probably his most well-known work, Tekken King Creep, which is a huge book. Uh, just for comparison, here it is with against uh, Go Go Monster, which is a six size. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty big, uh, pretty big uh, monster of a series, and uh, ah, so it's going to be really hard to show you art from this. But... Here it is. Yeah, this is probably going to be my uh, my next Matsumoto read. Um, either this or Cats at the Louvre, but I feel like going to his most iconic uh, series is probably best. Um, but yeah, those are other books by him. So, you know, just, just to kind of give you an idea of what else is out there by him. Um, but here's one thing that I would recommend, and this is actually a Western comic. Uh, but this is Essex County by Jeff Lemire. Uh, this is uh, especially the first story here. Um, it's kind of a coming of age story about this kid who um, sees himself as a superhero, and uh, and he kind of and he has to fight off an alien invasion, um, or so he thinks. And it's it kind of has that same kind of trapping where you have this kid that um, has this kind of uh, delusional belief, and I say delusional with air quotes. Uh, just because I don't really mean it to, in any sort of offensive way, of course, because uh, children are going to be children. This is uh, this is normal. But yeah, this kid sees himself as a superhero, and uh, especially this first story, I feel like uh, is very similar to uh, what Matsumoto is going for um, in Go Go Monster. Um, so yeah, other than that, I would recommend uh, Solonen by Asano. Uh, that's a little bit. That's definitely like a more um, in the, the twenty age range, the mid twenties age range. So it's not uh, it's not as similar, but I think it'll scratch some of those itches. And then, um, and I would definitely recommend Poon Poon if you like this. I think uh, Poon Poon would be a good recommendation. Just be aware that it's super dark. And while this is not, this is actually pretty wholesome, all things considered. This is actually actually super wholesome. Really, I can't really think of anything that's not wholesome in that in Go Go. Um, and Go Go Monster, but Poon Poon would still be a really re good recommendation. Um, other than that, I think I touched on everything. Um, this video is a little bit longer, probably about double as long as when I talked about um, Invitation from a Crab, 
but this is also a little bit longer and it's also got uh, a lot more meat to it um so yeah hopefully uh hopefully i'll have i'll keep these videos coming um and i hope you enjoy uh if you guys have any suggestions about how to do these uh these types of videos let me know um right now i'm calling these let's ramble uh or let's ramble about uh i think i just put let's ramble to kind of shorten the title so it's not too too long because it's already kind of long but right now i'm titling these let's ramble and then at the end of it i put like manga discussion review so people know more or less about what it is uh, but if you got any better names or ways of me branding this, let me know. If you got suggestions of on how to tackle this, let me know. Other suggestions for the channel, let me know. And uh, anything else, just leave me a comment. All right. And uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. I'll probably have more videos for you later. Goodbye.